The Greater Key of Solomon Book 1 A clear and precise exposition of King Solomon's secret procedure, its mysteries and magic rites, original plates, seals, charms and talismans. Everyone know it in the present day that from time immemorial Solomon possessed knowledge inspired by the wise teachings of an angel, to which he appeared so submissive and obedient, that in addition to the gift of wisdom, which he demanded, he obtained with profusion all the other virtues, which happened in order that knowledge worthy of eternal preservation might not be buried with his body. Being, so to speak, near his end, he left to his son Raboam a testament which should contain all, the wisdom, he had possessed prior to his death. The rabbins, who were careful to cultivate, the same knowledge, after him, called this testament the clavi cli, or key of Solomon, which they caused to be engraved on, pieces of, the bark of trees, while the pentacles were inscribed in Hebrew letters on plates of copper so that they might be carefully preserved in the temple which that wise king had caused to be built. This testament was in ancient time translated from the Hebrew into the Latin language by Rabbi Abognazar, who transported it with him into the town of Alz in Provence, where by a notable piece of good fortune the ancient Hebrew clavicle, that is to say, this precious translation of it, fell into the hands of the Archbishop of Alz, after the destruction of the Jews in that city, who, from the Latin, translated it into the vulgar tongue, in the same terms which here follow, without having either changed or augmented the original translation from the Hebrew. Chapter I Concerning the Divine Love which precedes the acquisition of this knowledge Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, hath said that the beginning of our key is to fear God, to adore Him to honor him with contrition of heart, to invoke him in all matters which we wish to undertake, and to operate with very great devotion, for thus God will lead us in the right way. When, therefore, thou shalt wish to acquire the knowledge of magical arts and sciences, it is necessary to have prepared the order of hours and of days, and of the position of the moon, without the operation of which thou canst effect nothing but if thou observest them with diligence thou mayest easily and thoroughly arrive at the effect and end which thou desirest to attain. Chapter 2 Of the days, and hours, and of the virtues of the planets. When thou wishest to make any experiment or operation, thou must first prepare, beforehand, all the requisites, such as candles and incense, which thou wilt find described in the following chapters observing the days, the hours, and the other effects of the constellations which may be found in this chapter. It is, therefore, advisable to know that the hours of the day and of the night together, are twenty-four in number, and that each hour is governed by one of the seven planets in regular order, commencing at the highest and descending to the low EST. The order of the planets is as follows, Shpthai, Shabathai, Saturn, Beneath Saturn is TZDQ, Tzedek, Jupiter, beneath Jupiter is Madam, Madam, Mars, beneath Mars is SHMSH, Shemesh, the Sun, beneath the Sun is NVGH, Noga, Venus, beneath Venus is KVKB, Kakoff, Mercury, and beneath Mercury is LBNH, Lavanna, the Moon, which is the lowest of all the planets. It must, Therefore, be understood that the planets have their dominion over the day which approach it nearest unto the name which is given and attributed unto them viz., over Saturday, Saturn, Thursday, Jupiter, Tuesday, Mars, Sunday, the Sun, Friday, Venus, Wednesday, Mercury, and Monday, the Moon. The rule of the planets over each hour begins from the dawn at the rising of the Sun on the day which take its name from such planet and the planet which follows it in order, succeeds to the rule over the next hour. Thus, on Saturday, Saturn rules the first hour, Jupiter the second, Mars the third, the Sun the fourth, Venus the fifth, Mercury the sixth, the Moon the seventh, and Saturn returns in the rule over the eighth, and the others in their turn, the planets always keeping the same relative order. 
Note that each experiment of magical operation should be performed under the planet, and usually in the hour, which refers to the same. For example, in the days and hours of Saturn thou canst perform experiments to summon the souls from Hades, but only of those who have died a natural death. Similarly on these days and hours thou canst operate to bring either good or bad fortune to buildings, to have familiar spirits attend thee in sleep, to cause good or ill success to business, POS sessions, goods, seeds, fruits and similar things, in order to acquire learning, to bring destruction and to give death, and to sow hatred and discord. The days and hours of Jupiter are proper for obtaining honors, acquiring riches, contracting friendships, preserving health, and arriving at all that thou canst desire. In the days and hours of Mars thou canst make experiments regarding war, to arrive at military honor, to acquire courage, to overthrow enemies, and further to cause ruin, slaughter, cruelty, discord, to wound and to give death. The days and hours of the sun are very good for, perfecting experiments regarding temporal wealth, hope, gain, fortune, divination, the favor of princes, to dissolve hostile feeling, and to make friends. The days and hours of Venus are good for forming friendships, for kindness and love, for joyous and pleasant undertakings, and for traveling. The days and hours of Mercury are good to operate for eloquence and intelligence, promptitude in business, science and divination, wonders, apparitions, and answers regarding the future. Thou canst also operate under this planet for thefts, writings, deceit, and merchandise. The days and hours of the moon are good for embassies, voyages, envoys, messages, navigation, reconciliation, love, and the acquisition of merchandise by water. Thou shouldst take care punctually to observe all the instructions contained in this chapter, if thou desirest to succeed, seeing that the truth of magical science dependeth thereon. The hours of Saturn, of Mars, and of the Moon are alike good for communicating and speaking with spirits, as those of Mercury are for recovering thefts by the means of spirits. The hours of Mars serve for summoning souls from Hades, especially of those slain in battle. The hours of the Sun, of Jupiter, and of Venus, are adapted for preparing any operations whatsoever of love, of kindness, and of invisibility, as is hereafter more fully shown, to which must be added other things of a similar nature which are contained in our work. The hours of Saturn and Mars and also the days on which the Moon is conjunct with them, or when she receives their opposition or quartile aspect, are excellent for making experiments of hatred, enmity, quarrel, and discord, and other operations of the same kind which are given later on in this work. The hours of Mercury are good for undertaking experiments relating to games, raillery, jests, sports, and the like. The hours of the Sun, of Jupiter, and of Venus, particularly on the days which they rule, are good for all extraordinary, uncommon, and unknown operations. The hours of the moon are proper for making trial of experiments relating to recovery of stolen property, for obtaining nocturnal visions, for summoning spirits in sleep, and for preparing anything relating to water. The hours of Venus are furthermore useful for lots, poisons, all things of the nature of Venus, for preparing powders provocative of madness, and the like things. But in order to thoroughly affect the operations of this art, Thou shouldest perform them not only on the hours but on the days of the planets as well, because then the experiment will always succeed better, provided thou observest the rules laid down later on, for if thou omittest one single condition thou wilt never arrive at the accomplishment of the art. For those matters then which appertain unto the moon, such as the invocation of spirit, the works of necromancy, and the recovery of stolen property, it is necessary that the moon should be in a terrestrial sign, viz., Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. For love, grace, and invisibility, the moon should be in a fiery sign, viz., Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. For hatred, discord, and destruction, 
the moon should be in a watery sign, viz., Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. For experiments of a peculiar nature, which cannot be classed under any certain head, the moon should be in an airy sign, viz., Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. But if these things seem unto thee difficult to accomplish, it will suffice thee merely to notice the moon after her combustion, or conjunction with the sun, esp chaly just when she quits his beams and appeareth visible. For then it is good to make all experiments for the construction and operation of any matter. That is why the time from the new unto the full moon is proper for performing any of the experiments of which we have spoken above. But in her decrease or wane it is good for war, disturbance, and discord. Likewise the period when she is almost deprived of light, is proper for experiments of invisibility, and of death. But observe inviolably that thou commence nothing while the moon is in conjunction with the sun, seeing that this is extremely unfortunate, and that thou wilt then be able to effect nothing, but the moon quitting his beams and increasing in light, thou canst perform all that thou desirest, observing nevertheless the directions in this chapter. Furthermore, if thou wishest to converse with spirits it should be especially on the day of Mercury and in his hour, and let the moon be in an airy sign, as well as the Sunday. Retire thou then unto a secret place, where no one may be able to see thee or to hinder thee, before the completion of the experiment, whether thou shouldest wish to work by day or by night. But if thou shouldest wish to work by night, perfect thy work on the succeeding night, if by day, seeing that the day beginneth with the rising of the sun, perfect thy work on, the succeeding day. But the hour of inception is the hour of Mercury. Verily, since no experiments for converse with spirits can be done without a C.I.R. Clee being prepared, whatsoever experiments therefore thou wishest to undertake for conversing with spirits, therein thou must learn to construct a certain particular C.I.R. Clee that being done surround that circle with the circle of art for better caution and efficacy. Concerning the arts If thou wishest to succeed, it is necessary to make the following experiments and arts in the appropriate days and hours, with the requisite solemnities and ceremonies contained and laid down in the following chapters. Experiments, then, are of two kinds, the first is to make trial of what, as I have said, can be easily performed without a circle, and in this case it is not necessary to observe anything but what thou wilt find in the proper chapters. The second can in no way be brought to perfection without the circle, and in order to accomplish this perfectly it is necessary to take note of all the preparations which the master of the art and his disciples must undertake before constructing the circle. Before commencing operations both the master and his disciples must abstain with great and thorough continence during the space of nine days from sensual pleasures and from vain and foolish conversation, as plainly appeareth in the second book, chapter 4. Six of the days having expired, he must recite frequently the prayer and confession as will be told him, and on the seventh day, the master being alone, let him enter into a secret place let him take off his clothes, and bathe himself from head to foot in consecrated and exorcised water, saying devoutly and humbly the prayer, O Lord Adonai, etc., as it is written in the second book, chapter 2. The prayer being finished, let the master quit the water, and put upon his flesh raiment of white linen clean and unsoiled, and then let him go with his disciples unto a secret place and command them to strip themselves naked and they having taken off their clothes, let him take exorcised water and pour it upon their heads so that it flows down to their feet and bathes them completely, and while pouring this water upon them let the master say, Be ye regenerate, renewed, washed, and pure, and see. As in Book 2, Chapter 3. Which being done, the disciples must clothe themselves, putting upon their flesh, like their master, raiment of white linen clean and unsoiled, and the three last days the master and his disciples should fast, observing the solemnities and prayers marked in Book 2, Chapter 2. Note that the three last days should be calm weather, without wind, and without clouds rushing hither and thither over the face of the sky. 
On the last day let the master go with his disciples unto a secret fountain of running water, or unto a flowing stream, and there let each of them taking off his clothes, wash himself with due solemnity, as is rehearsed in Book 2. And when they are clean and pure, let each put upon him garments of white linen, pure, and clean, using the prayers and ceremonies described in Book 2. After which let the master alone say the confession. The which being finished, the master in sign of penitence will kiss the disciples on the forehead, and each of them will kiss the other. Afterwards let the master extend his hands over the disciples, and in sign of absolution, absolve and bless them, which being done he will distribute to each of his disciples the instruments necessary for magical art, which he is to carry into the circle. The first disciple will bear the censer, the perfumes, and the incense, the second disciple will bear the book, paper, pens, ink, and any stinking or impure materials, the third will carry the knife and the sickle of magical art, the lantern, and the candles, the fourth, the psalms, and the rest of the instruments, the fifth, the crucible, or chafing dish, and the charcoal or fuel, but it will be necessary for the master himself to carry in his hand the staff, and the wand or rod. The things necessary being thus disposed, the master will go with his disciples unto the assigned place, which they have proposed to construct the circle for the magical arts and experiments, repeating on the way the prayers and orations which thou wilt find in Book 2. When the master shall have arrived at the place appointed, together with his disciples, he having lighted the flame of the fire, and having exorcised it afresh as is laid down in the second book, shall light the candle and place it in the lantern, which one of the disciples is to hold ever in his hand to light the master at his work. Now the master of the art, every time that he shall have occasion for some particular purpose to speak with the spirits, must endeavor to form certain circles which shall differ somewhat, and shall have some particular reference to the particular experiment under consideration. Now, in order to succeed in forming such a circle concerning magical art, for the greater assurance and efficacy thou shalt construct it in the fall lowing manner. The Construction of the Circle Take thou the knife, the sickle, or the sword of magical art consecrated after the manner and order which we shall deliver unto thee in the second book. With this knife or with the sickle of art thou shalt describe, beyond the inner circle which thou shalt have already formed, a second circle, encompassing the other at the distance of one foot therefrom and having the same center. Within this space of a foot in breadth between the first and the second circumferential line, thou shalt trace towards the four quarters of the earth, the sacred and venerable symbols of the holy letter Tau. And between the first and the second circle which thou shalt thyself have drawn with the instrument of magical art, thou shalt make four hexagonal pentacles, and between these thou shalt write four terrible and tremendous names of God, viz., between the east and the south the supreme name IHVH, Tetragrammaton, between the south and the west the essential tetragrammatic name AHIH, Ehe, between the west and the north the name of Power Eleven, Elian, and between the north and the east the great name ALH, Elo, which names are of supreme importance in the list of the Sephiroth and their sovereign equivalents. Furthermore, thou shalt circumscribe about these circles two squares, the angles of which shall be turned towards the four quarters of the earth, and the space between the lines of the outer and inner square shall be half a foot. The extreme angles of the outer square shall be made the centers of four circles, the measure or diameter of which shall be one foot. All these are to be drawn with the knife or consecrated instrument of art. And within these four circles thou must write these four names of God the Most Holy One, in this order. At the east, A-L, L, at the west, I-H, Ya, at the south, A-G-L-A, Agla, and at the north A-D-N-I, Adonai. Between the two squares the name Tetragrammaton is to be written in the same way as is shown in the plate. See Figure 2. While constructing the circle, the master should recite the following psalms, Psalm 2, Psalm Liv, Psalm Xiath, Psalm Xiai, 
Psalm Slay Ei, Psalm Luxiath. Or he may as well recite them before tracing the circle. The witch being finished, and the fumigations being performed, as is described in the chapter on fumigations in the second book, the master should reassemble his disciples, encourage them, reassure them, fortify them, and conduct them into the parts of the circle of art, where he must place them in the four quarters of the earth, encourage them, and exhort them to fear nothing, and to keep in the places assigned to them. Also, the disciple who is placed towards the east should have a pen, ink, paper, silk, and white cotton, all clean and suitable for the work. Furthermore, each of the companions should have a new sword drawn in his hand, besides the consecrated magical sword of art, and he should keep his hand resting upon the hilt thereof, and he should on no pretext quit the place assigned to him, nor move therefrom. After this the master should quit the circle, light the fuel in the earthen pots, and place upon them the censers, in the four quarters of the earth, and he should have in his hand the consecrated taper of wax, and he should light it and place it in a hidden and secret place prepared for it. Let him after this re-enter and close the circle. The master should afresh exhort his disciples, and explain to them all that they have to do and to observe, the which commands they should promise and vow to execute. Let the master then repeat this prayer. Prayer When we enter herein with all humility, let God the Almighty One enter into this circle, by the entrance of an eternal happiness, of a divine prosperity, of a perfect joy, of an abundant charity, and of an eternal salutation. Let all the demons fly from this place, especially those who are opposed unto this work, and let the angels of peace assist and protect this circle, from which let discord and strife fly and depart. Magnify and extend upon us, O Lord, thy most holy name, and bless our conversation and our assembly. Sanctify, O Lord our God, our humble entry herein, Thou the Blessed and Holy One of the Eternal Ages. Amen. After this, let the Master say upon his knees, as follows. O Lord God, all-powerful and all-merciful, Thou who desirest not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, give and grant unto us Thy grace, by blessing and consecrating this earth and this circle, which is here marked out with the most powerful and holy names of God. And thee, I conjure, O earth, by the most holy name of Asherahiah entering within this circle, composed and made with mine hand. And may God, even Adonai, bless this place with all the virtues of heaven, so that no obscene or unclean spirit may have the power to enter into this circle, or to annoy any person who is therein, though the Lord God Adonai, who liveth eternally unto the ages of the ages. Amen. I beseech thee, O Lord God, the All-Powerful and the All-Merciful, that thou wilt deign to bless this circle, and all this place, and all those who are therein, and that thou wilt grant unto us, who serve thee, and rehearse nothing but the wonders of thy law, a good angel for our guardian, remove from us every adverse power, preserve us from evil and from trouble, Grant, O Lord, that we may rest in this place in all safety, through Thee, O Lord, who livest and reignest unto the ages of the ages. Amen. Let the Master now arise and place upon his head a crown made of paper, or any other appropriate substance, on the which there must be written, with the colors and other necessary things which we shall describe hereafter, these four names Agla, Aglai. Aglata, Aglatai. The which names are to be placed in the front, behind, and on either side of the head. Furthermore, the master ought to have with him in the circle those pentacles or medals which are necessary to his purpose, which are described hereinafter, and which should be constructed according to the rules given in the chapter on pentacles. They should be described on virgin paper with a pen, an ink, blood, or colors prepared according to the manner which we shall hereafter show in the chapters on these subjects. It will be sufficient to take only those pentacles which are actually required, 
they should be sewed to the front of the linen robe, on the chest, with the consecrated needle of the art, and with a thread which has been woven by a young girl. After this, let the master turn himself towards the eastern quarter, unless directed to the contrary, or unless he should be wishing to call spirits which belong to another quarter of the universe, and pronounce with a loud voice the conjuration contained in this chapter. And if the spirits be disobedient and do not then make their appearance, he must arise and take the exorcised knife of art wherewith he hath constructed the circle, and raise it towards the sky as if he wished to beat or strike the air, and conjure the spirits. Let him then lay his right hand and the knife upon the pentacles or metals, constructed of, and described upon virgin paper, which are faws tend to or sewn upon his breast, and let him repeat the following conjuration upon his knees, Conjuration. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. O Lord God Almighty, who has reigned before the beginning of the ages, and who by thine infinite wisdom, hast created the heavens, the earth, and the sea, and all that in them is, all that is visible, and all that is invisible by a single word, I praise thee, I bless thee, I adore thee, I glorify thee, and I pray thee now at the present time to be merciful unto me, a miserable sinner, for I am the work of thine hands. Save me, and direct me by thy holy name, thou to whom nothing is difficult, nothing is impossible, and deliver me from the night of mine ignorance, and enable me to go forth therefrom. Enlighten me with a spark of thine infinite wisdom. Take away from my senses the desire of covetousness, and the iniquity of mine idle words. Give unto me, thy servant, a wise understanding, penetrating and subtle heart, to acquire and comprehend all sciences and arts, give unto me capacity to hear, and strength of memory to retain them, so that I may be able to accomplish my desires, and understand and learn all difficult and desirable sciences, and also that I may be able to comprehend the hidden secrets of the holy writings. Give me the virtue to conceive them, so that I may be able to bring forth and pronounce my words with patience and humility, for the instruction of Oth ERS, as thou hast ordered me. O God, the Father, all powerful and all merciful, who hast created all things, who knowest and conceivest them universally, and to whom nothing is hidden, nothing is impossible, I entreat thy grace for me and for thy servants, because thou seest and knowest well that we perform not this work to tempt thy strength and thy power as if in doubt thereof, but rather that we may know and understand the truth of all hidden things. I beseech thee to have the kindness to be favorable unto us, by thy splendor, thy magnificence, and thy holiness, and by thy holy, terrible, and ineffable name Ea, at which the whole world doth tremble, and by the fear with which all creatures obey thee. Grant, O Lord, that we may become responsive unto thy grace, so that through it we may have a full confidence in and knowledge of thee, and that the spirits may discover themselves here in our presence, and that those which are gentle and peaceable may come unto us so that they may be obedient unto thy commands, through thee, O most holy Adonai, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and whose empire endureth unto the ages of the ages. Amen. After having said all these words devoutly, let the master arise, and place his hands upon the pentacles, and let one of the companions hold the book open before the master, who, raising his eyes to heaven, and turning unto the four quarters of the universe, shall say, O Lord, be thou unto me a tower of strength against the appearance and assault of the evil spirits. After this, turning towards the four quarters of the universe, he shall say the following words, These be the symbols and the names of the Creator, which can bring terror and fear unto you. Obey me then, by the power of these holy names and by these mysterious symbols of the secret of secrets. The which being said and done, thou shalt see them draw near and approach from all parts. But if they be hindered, detained, or occupied in some way, and so that they cannot come, or if they are unwilling to come, then, the suffumigations and sensings being performed anew, and, 
the disciples, having a new, by a special order, touched their swords, and the master having encouraged his disciples, he shall reform the circle with the knife of art, and, raising the said knife towards the sky, he shall as it were strike the air therewith. After this he shall lay his hand upon the Pentacles, and having bent his knees before the Most High, he shall repeat with humility the following confession, the which his disciples shall also do, and they shall recite it in a low and humble voice, so that they can scarcely be heard. The Confession to be made by the Exorcist Confession O Lord of heaven and of earth, before thee do I confess my sins, and lament them, cast down and humbled in thy presence. For I have sinned before thee by pride, avarice, and boundless desire of honours and riches, by idleness, gluttony, greed, debauchery, and drunkenness, because I have offended thee by all kinds of sins of the flesh, adulteries, and pollutions, which I have committed myself, and consented that others should commit, by sacrilege, thefts, rapine, violation, and homicide, by the evil use I have made of my possessions, by my prodigality, by the sins which I have committed against hope and charity, by my evil advice, flatteries, bribes, and the ill distribution which I have made of the goods of which I have been possessed, by repulsing and maltreating the poor, in the distribution which I have made of the goods committed to my charge, by afflicting those over whom I have been set in authority, by not visiting the prisoners, by depriving the dead of burial, by not receiving the poor, by neither feeding the hungry nor giving drink to the thirsty, by never keeping the Sabbath and the other feasts, by not living chastely and piously on those days, by the easy consent which I have given to those who incited me to evil deeds, by injuring instead of aiding those who demanded help from me, by refusing to give ear unto the cry of the poor, by not respecting the aged, by not keeping my word, by disobedience to my parents, by ingratitude towards those from whom I have received kindness, by indulgence in sensual pleasures, by irreverent behavior in the temple of God, by unseemly gestures thereat, by entering therein without reverence, by vain and unprofitable discourse when there, by despising the sacred vessels of the temple, by turning the holy ceremonies into ridicule, by touching and eating the sacred bread with impure lips and with profane hands, and by the neglect of my prayers and adorations. I detest also the crimes which I have committed by evil thoughts, vain and impure meditations, false suspicions, and rash judgments, by the evil consent which I have readily given unto the advice of the wicked, by lust of impure and sensual pleasures, by my idle words, my lies, and my deceit, by my false vows in various ways, and by my continual slander and calumny. I detest also the crimes which I have committed within, the treachery and discord which I have incited, my curiosity, greed, false speaking, violence, malediction, murmurs, blasphemies, vain words, insults, dissimulations, my sins against God by the transgression of the Ten Commandments, by neglect of my duties and obligations, and by want of love towards God and towards my neighbor. Furthermore I hate the sins which I have committed in all my senses, by sight, by hearing, by taste, by smell, and by touch in every way that human weakness can offend the Creator, by my carnal thoughts, deeds, and meditations, in which I humbly confess that I have sinned, and recognize myself as being in the sight of God the most criminal of all men. I accuse myself before Thee, O God, and I adore Thee with all humility. O yet, holy angels, and yet, children of God, in Your presence I publish my sins, so that mine enemy may have no advantage over me, and may not be able to reproach me at the last day, that he may not be able to say that I have concealed my sins, and that I be not then accused in the presence of the Lord, but, on the contrary, that on my account there may be joy in heaven, as over the just who have confessed their sins in thy presence. O most almighty and all-powerful Father! Grant through thine unbounded mercy that I may both see and know all the spirits which I invoke, 
so that by their means I may see my will and desire accomplished, by the sovereign grandeur, and by thine ineffable and eternal glory, thou who art and who wilt be for ever the pure and ineffable Father of all. The confession having been finished with great humility, and with the inward feeling of the heart, the Master will recite the following prayer. Prayer O Lord All-Powerful, Eternal God and Father of all creatures, shed upon me the divine influence of thy mercy, for I am thy creature. I beseech thee to defend me from mine enemies, and to confirm in me true and steadfast faith. O Lord, I commit my body and my soul unto thee, seeing I put my trust in none beside thee, it is on thee alone that I rely, O Lord my God aid me, O Lord hear me in the day and hour wherein I shall invoke thee. I pray thee by thy mercy not to put me in oblivion, nor to remove me from thee. O Lord be thou my succor, thou who art the God of my salvation. O Lord make me a new heart according unto thy loving kindness. These, O Lord, are the gifts which I await from thee, O my God and my Master, thou who livest and reignest unto the ages of the ages. Amen. O Lord God the All-Powerful One, who hast formed unto thyself great and ineffable wisdom, and see O Eternal with thyself before the countless ages, thou who in the birth of time hast created the heavens, and the earth, the sea, and things that they contain, thou who hast vivified all things by the breath of thy mouth, I praise thee, I bless thee, I adore thee, and I glorify thee. Be thou propitious unto me who am but a miserable sinner, and despise me not, save me and succor me, even me the work of thine hands. I conjure and entreat thee by thy holy name to banish from my spirit the darkness of ignorance, and to enlighten any with the fire of thy wisdom, take away from me all evil desires, and let not my speech be as that of the foolish. O thou, God the living one, whose glory, honor, and kingdom shall extend unto the ages of the ages. Amen. Prayer and Conjurations Prayer O Lord God, Holy Father, Almighty, and Merciful One, who hast created all things, who knowest all things and can do all things, from whom nothing is hidden, to whom nothing is impossible, Thou who knowest that we perform not these ceremonies to tempt Thy power, but that we may penetrate into the knowledge of hidden things, we pray Thee by Thy sacred mercy to cause and to permit, that we may arrive at this understanding of secret things of whatever nature they may be by thine aid, O Most Holy. Adonai, whose kingdom and power shall have no end unto the ages of the ages. Amen. The prayer being finished, let the exorcist lay his hand upon the pentacles, while one of the disciples shall hold open before him the book wherein are written the prayers and conjurations proper for conquering, subduing and reproving the spirits. Then the Master, turning towards each quarter of the earth, and raising his eyes to heaven, shall say, O Lord, be thou unto me a strong tower of refuge, from the sight and assaults of the evil spirits. After which let him turn again towards the four quarters of the earth, and towards each let him utter the following words, Behold the symbols and names of the Creator, which give unto ye forever terror and fear. Obey then, by the virtue of these holy names, and by these mysteries of mysteries. After this he shall see the spirits come from every side. But in case they are occupied in some other place, or that they cannot come, or that they are unwilling to come, then let him commence afresh to invoke them after the following manner, and let the exorcist be assured that even were they bound with chains of iron, and with fire, they could not refrain from coming to accomplish his will. The Conjuration O oh ye spirits, yet I conjure by the power, wisdom, and virtue of the Spirit of God, by the uncreate divine knowledge, by the vast mercy of God, by the strength of God, by the greatness of God, by the unity of God, and by the holy name of God Ahayi, which is the root, trunk, source, and origin of all the other divine names, whence they all draw their life and their virtue, which Adam having invoked, he acquired the knowledge of all created things. I conjure ye by the indivisible name Iod, 
which marketh and expresseth seth the simplicity and the unity of the nature divine, which Abel having invoked, he deserved to escape from the hands of Cain his brother. I conjure ye by the name Tetragrammat and Elohim, which expresseth seth and signifieth the grandeur of so lofty a majesty, that Noah having pronounced it, saved himself and protected himself with his whole household from the waters of the deluge. I conjure ye by the name of God El Strong and Wonderful, which denoteth the mercy and goodness of his majesty divine, which Abraham having invoked, he was found worthy to come forth from the Ur of the Chaldeans. I conjure ye by the most powerful name of Elohim Jiber, which showeth forth the strength of God, of a God all-powerful, who punisheth the crimes of the wicked who seeketh out and chastiseth the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation, which Isaac having invoked, he was found worthy to escape from the sword of Abraham his father. I conjure yet and I exorcise ye by the most holy name of Elo Doth, which Jacob invoked when in great trouble, and was found worthy to bear the name of Israel, which signifieth vanquisher of God, and he was delivered from the fury of Esau his brother. I conjure ye by the most potent name of El. Adonai Zabaoth, which is the God of armies, ruling in the heavens, which Joseph invoked and was found worthy to escape from the hands of his brethren. I conjure ye by the most potent name of Elohim Zabaoth, which expresseth seth piety, mercy, splendor, and knowledge of God, which Moses invoked, and he was found worthy to deliver the people Israel from Egypt, and from the servitude of Pharaoh. I conjure ye by the most potent name of Shaddai, which signifieth doing good unto all, which Moses invoked, and having struck the sea, it divided into two parts in the midst, on the right hand and on the left. I conjure ye by the most holy name of El Chai, which is that of the living God, through the virtue of which alliance with us, and redemption for us have been made which Moses invoked and all the waters returned to their prior state and enveloped the Egyptians, so that not one of them escaped to carry the news into the land of Mizraim. Lastly, I conjure yet all, ye rebellious spirits, by the most holy name of God Adonai Malak, which Joshua invoked, and stayed the course of the sun in his presence, through the virtue of Methraton, its principal image and by the troops of angels who cease not to cry day and night, Kadus, Sadus, Kadus, Adonai Elohim Zabaoth, that is, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory, and by the ten angels who preside over the ten Sephiroth, by whom God communicateth and extendeth his influence over lower things, which are Kether, Chakma, Bina, Gadila, Gabera, Tiph Erith, Netzach, Had, Yezid, and Makath. I conjure ye anew, O spirits, by all the names of God, and by all his marvelous work, by the heavens, by the earth, by the sea, by the depth of the abyss, and by that firmament which the very Spirit of God hath moved, by the sun and by the stars, by the waters and by the seas, and all which they contain by the winds, the whirlwinds, and the tempests, by the virtue of all herbs, plants, and stones, by all which is in the heavens, upon the earth, and in all the abysses of the shades. I conjure ye anew, and I powerfully urge ye, O demons, in whatsoever part of the world ye may be, so that ye shall be unable to remain in air, fire, water, earth, or in any part of the universe or in any pleasant place which may attract ye, but that ye come promptly to accomplish our desire, and all things that we demand from your obedience. I conjure ye anew by the two tables of the law, by the five books of Moses, by the seven burning lamps on the candlestick of gold before the face of the throne of the majesty of God, and by the holy of holies wherein the Kohen Hagagel was alone permitted to enter, that is to say, the high priest. I conjure ye by him who hath made the heavens and the earth, and who hath measured those heavens in the hollow of his hand, and enclosed the earth with three of his fingers, who is seated upon the cherubim and upon the seraphim, and by the cherubim, which is called the cherub, 
which God constituted and placed to guard the tree of life, armed with a flaming sword, after that man had been driven out of paradise. I conjure Yehanu, apostates from God, by him who alone hath performed great wonders, by the heavenly Jerusalem, and by the most holy name of God in four letters, and by him who enlighteneth all things and shineth upon all things by his venerable and ineffable name, Ahei Asher Ahei, that ye come immediately to execute our desire, whatever it may be. I conjure ye, and I command ye absolutely, O demons, in whatsoever part of the universe ye may be, by the virtue of all these holy names, Dash Adonai, Ya, Hoa, El, Elo, Elohinu, Elohim, Ahei, Maran, Kafu, Esh, Inan, Avan, Agla, Hazor, Emeth, Ya, Aritha, Yova, Hakabir, Messi Ach, Iana, Malka, Erel, Kuzu, Matspats El Shaddai, and by all the holy names of God which have been written with blood in the sign of an eternal alliance. I conjure ye anew by these other names of God, most holy and unknown, by the virtue of which names ye tremble every day. Dash Barak, Bakurabin, Pudasil, Alchigal, Aquachai, Homorion, Ahei, Arbaton, Shavan, Seban, Oisroimas, Chai, Ahei, Albamaki, Ortigu, Nail, Abalek, or Helak, Yeze, or Siches, that ye come quickly and without any delay into our presence from every quarter and every climate of the world wherein ye may be, to execute all that we shall command ye in the great name of God. Stronger and more potent conjuration. If they then immediately appear, it is well, if not, let the Master uncover the consecrated pentacles which he should have made to constrain and command the spirits, and which he should wear fastened round his neck, holding the medals, or pentacles, in his left hand, and the consecrated knife in his right, and encouraging his companions, he shall say with a loud voice, Address. Here be the symbols of secret things, the standards, the ensigns, and the banners, of God the Conqueror, and the arms of the Almighty One, to compel the aerial potencies. I command ye absolutely by their power and virtue that ye come near unto us, into our presence, from whatsoever part of the world ye may be in, and that ye delay not to obey us in all things wherein we shall command ye by the virtue of God the Mighty One. Come ye promptly and delay not to appear, and answer us with humility. If they appear at this time, show them the pentacles, and receive them with kindness, gentleness and courtesy, reason and speak with them, question them and ask from them all things which thou hast proposed to demand. But if, on the contrary, they do not yet make their appearance, holding the consecrated knife in the right hand, and the pentacles being uncovered by the removal of their consecrated covering, strike and beat the air with the knife as if wishing to commence a combat, comfort and exhort thy companions, and then in a loud and stern voice repeat the following conjuration. Conjuration Here again I conjure yet and most urgently command yet, I force, constrain and exhort yet to the utmost, by the most mighty and powerful name of God L, strong and wonderful, and by God the just and upright, I exorcise ye and command ye that ye in no way delay, but that ye come immediately and upon the instant hither before us, without noise, deformity, or hideousness, but with all manner of gentleness and mildness. I exorcise ye anew, and powerfully conjure ye, commanding ye with strength and violence by him who spake and it was done, and by all these names, El, Shaddai, Elohim, Elohi, Zabaoth, Elim, Asher Ahei, Yah, Tetragrammaton, Shaddai, which signify God the High and Almighty, the God of Israel, through whom undertaking all our operations we shall prosper in all the works of our hands, seeing that the Lord is now, always, and forever with us, in our heart and in our lips, and by His holy names. And by the virtue of the Sovereign God, we shall accomplish all our work. Come yet at once without any hideousness or deformity before us, come yet without monstrous appearance, 
in a gracious form or figure. Come yet, for we exorcise ye with the utmost vehemence by the name of Iao and On, which Adam spake and heard, by the name El, which Noah heard, and saved himself with all his family from the deluge, by the name Iod, which Noah heard, and knew God the Almighty One, by the name Agla, which Jacob heard, and saw the ladder which touched heaven, and the angels who ascended and descended upon it, whence he called that place the house of God and the gate of heaven, and by the name Elohim, and in the name Elohim, which Moses named, invoked, and heard in Horeb the mount of God, and he was found worthy to hear him speak from the burning bush, and by the name Ansaf, which Aaron heard, and was at once made eloquent, wise, and learned, and by the name Zabaoth, which Moses named and invoked, and all the ponds and rivers were covered with blood throughout the land of Egypt, and by the name Iod, which Moses named and invoked, and striking upon the dust of the earth both men and beasts were struck with disease, and by the name, and in the name Primomaton, which Moses named and invoked, and there fell a great and severe hail throughout all the land of Egypt, destroying the vines, the trees, and the woods which were in that country, and by the name Iafar, which Moses heard and invoked, and immediately a great pestilence began to appear through all the land of Egypt, striking and slaying the asses, the oxen, and the sheep of the Egyptians, so that they all died, and by the name Abaddon which Moses invoked and sprinkled the dust towards heaven, and immediately there fell so great rain upon the men, cattle, and flocks, that they all died throughout the land of Egypt, and by the name Elian which Moses invoked, and there fell so great hail as had never been seen from the beginning of the world unto that time, so that all men, and herds, and everything that was in the fields perished and died throughout all the land of Egypt. And by the name Edenal, which Moses having invoked, there came so great a quantity of locusts which appeared in the land of Egypt, that they devoured and swallowed up all that the hail had spared, and by the name of Pathian, which having invoked, there arose so thick, so awful, and so terrible darkness throughout the land of Egypt, during the space of three days and three nights, that almost all who were left alive died, and by the name Yezid and in the name Yezid, which Moses invoked, and at midnight all the firstborn, both of men and of animals, died, and by the name of Yashimon, which Moses named and invoked, and the Red Sea divided itself and separated in two, and by the name Hezion, which Moses invoked, and all the army of Pharaoh was drowned in the waters, and by the name Anabona, which Moses having heard upon Mount Sinai, he was found worthy to receive and obtain the tables of stone written with the finger of God the Creator, and by the name Origin, which Joshua having invoked when he fought against the Moabites, he defeated them and gained the victory, and by the name Hoa, and in the name Hoa, which David invoked, and he was delivered from the hand of Goliath, and by the name Yod, which Solomon having named and invoked, he was found worthy to ask for and obtain in sleep the ineffable wisdom of God, and by the name Yiai, which Solomon having named and invoked, he was found worthy to have power over all the demons, potencies, powers, and virtues of the air. By these, then, and by all the other names of God Almighty, holy, living, and true, we powerfully command yet, ye who by your own sin have been cast down from the imperial heaven, and from before his throne, by him who hath cast ye down unto the most profound of the abysses of hell, we command ye boldly and resolutely, and by that terrible day of the sovereign judgment of God, on which all the dry bones in the earth will arise to hear and listen unto the word of God with their body, and will present themselves before the face of God Almighty, and by that last fire which shall consume all things, by the, crystal, sea which is known unto us, which is before the face of God, by the indicable and ineffable virtue, force, and power of the Creator Himself, by His almighty power, and by the light and flame which emanate from His countenance, and which are before His face, by the angelical powers which are in the heavens, and by the most great wisdom of Almighty God, by the seal of David by the ring and seal of Solomon, 
which was revealed unto him by the Most High and Sovereign Creator, and by the nine metals or pentacles, which we have among our symbols, which proceed and come from heaven, and are among the mysteries of mysteries or secrets of secrets, which you can also behold in my hand, consecrated and exorcised with the due and requisite ceremonies. By these, then, and by all the secrets which the Almighty encloseth in the treasures of the Sovereign and Highest Wisdom, by His hand, and by His marvelous power, I conjure, force, and exorcise ye that ye come without delay to perform in our presence that which we shall command ye. I conjure ye anew by that most holy name which the whole universe fears, respects, and reveres, which is written by these letters and characters, Iod, He, Vav, He, and by the last and terrible judgment, by the seat of Baldachia, and by this holy name, Yiai, which Moses invoked, and there followed that great judgment of God, when Dathan and Abiram were swallowed up in the center of the earth. Otherwise, if ye contravene and resist us by your disobedience unto the virtue and power of this name Yiai, we curse ye even unto the depth of the great abyss, into the which we shall cast, hurl, and bind ye, if ye show yourselves rebellious against the secret of secrets, and against the mystery of mysteries. Amen, Amen. Fiat, Fiat. This conjuration thou shalt say and perform turning thyself unto the east, and if they appear not, thou shalt repeat it unto the spirits, turning unto the south, the west, and the north, in succession, when thou wilt have repeated it four times. And if they appear not even then, thou shalt make the sign of Tau upon the foreheads of thy companions, and thou shalt say, Conjuration! Behold anew the symbol and the name of a sovereign and conquering God, through which all the universe fears, trembles, and shudders, and through the most mysterious words of the secret mysteries and by their virtue, strength, and power. I conjure ye anew, I constrain and command ye with the utmost vehemence and power, by that most potent and powerful name of God, El, strong and wonderful, by him who spake and it was done, and by the name Ea, which Moses heard, and spoke with God and by the name Agla, which Joseph invoked, and was delivered out of the hands of his brethren, and by the name Vav, which Abraham heard, and knew God the Almighty One, and by the name of four letters, Tetragrammaton, which Joshua named and invoked. And he was rendered worthy and found deserving to lead the army of Israel into the promised land, and by the name Anabona, by which God formed man and the whole universe, and by the name Arphedon, and in the name Arphedon, by which the angels who are destined to that end will summon the universe, in visible body and form, and will assemble, all people, together by the sound of the trumpet at that terrible and awful day of judgment, when the memory of the wicked and ungodly shall perish, and by the name Adonai, by which God will judge all human flesh, at whose voice all men, both good and evil, will rise again, and all men and angels will assemble in the air before the Lord, who will judge and condemn the wicked, and by the name Onifitone, by which God will summon the dead, and raise them up again unto life, and by the name Elohim, and in the name Elohim, by which God will disturb and excite tempests throughout all the seas, so that they will cast out the fish therefrom, and in one day the third part of men about the sea and the rivers shall die and by the name Elohi, and in the name Elohi, by which God will dry up the sea and the rivers, so that men can go on foot through their channels, and by the name On, and in the name On, by which God shall restore and replace the sea, the rivers, the streams, and the brooks, in their previous state, and by the name Messiac, and in the name Messiac, by which God will make all animals combat together, so that they shall die in a single day, and by the name Ariel, by which God shall destroy in a single day all buildings, so that there shall not be left one stone upon another, and by the name Iaht, by which God will cast one stone upon another, so that all people and nations will fly from the seashore, and will say unto them cover us and hide us, and by the name Emmanuel, 
by which God will perform wonders, and the winged creatures and birds of the air shall contend with one another, and by the name Anael, and in the name Anael, by which God will cast down the mountains and fill up the valleys, so that the surface of the earth shall be level in all parts, and by the name Zedaresia, and in the name Zedaresia, by which God will cause the sun and moon to be darkened, and the stars of heaven to fall, and by the name Sepharael, by which God will come to universal judgment, like a prince newly crowned entering in triumph into his capital city, girded with a zone of gold, and preceded by angels, and at his aspect all climes and parts of the universe shall be troubled and astonished, and a fire shall go forth before him, and flames and storm shall surround him, and by the name Tau, by which God brought the deluge, and the waters prevailed above the mountains, and fifteen cubits above their summits, and by the name Ruachiah, by which God having purged the ages, he will make his Holy Spirit to descend upon the universe, and will cast yet, ye rebellious spirits, and unclean beings, into the depths of the lake of the abyss, in misery, filth, and mire, and will place yet in impure and foul dungeons bound with eternal chains of fire. By these names then, and by all the other holy names of God before whom no man can stand and live, and which names the armies of the demons fear, tremble at, and shudder, we conjure yet, we potently exorcise and command yet, conjuring yet in addition by the terrible and tremendous paths of God and by his holy habitation wherein he regneth and commandeth unto the eternal ages. Amen. By the virtue of all these aforesaid, we command ye that ye remain not in any place wherein ye are, but to come hither promptly without delay to do that which we shall enjoin yet. But if ye be still contumacious, we, by the authority of a sovereign and potent God, deprive ye of all quality, condition, degree, and place which ye now enjoy, and precipitate ye into and relegate ye unto the kingdom of fire and of sulphur, to be there eternally tormented come ye then from all parts of the earth, wheresoever ye may be, and behold the symbols and names of that triumphant sovereign whom all creatures obey, otherwise we shall bind ye and conduct ye in spite of yourselves, into our presence bound with chains of fire, because those effects which proceed and issue from our science and operation, are ardent with a fire which shall consume and burn yet eternally, for by these the whole universe trembleth, the earth is moved, the stones thereof rush together, all creatures obey, and the rebellious spirits are tormented by the power of the Sovereign Creator. Then it is certain that they will come, even if they be bound with chains of fire, unless prevented by affairs of the very greatest importance, but in this latter case they will send ambassadors and messengers by whom thou shalt easily and surely learn what occupies the spirits and what they are about. But if they appear not yet in answer to the above conjuration, and are still disobedient, then let the master of the art or exorciser arise and exhort his companions to be of good cheer and not to despair of the ultimate success of the operation, let him strike the air with the consecrated knife towards the four quarters of the universe, and then let him kneel in the midst of the circle, and the companions also in their several places, and let them say consecutively with him in a low voice. Turning in the direction of the east, the following. Address to the angels. I conjure and pray ye, O ye angels of God, and ye celestial spirits, to come unto mine aid. Come and behold the signs of heaven, and be my witness before the Sovereign Lord, of the disobedience of these evil and fallen spirits who were at one time your companions. This being done, let the Master arise, and constrain, and force them by a stronger conjuration, in manner following. An extremely powerful conjuration. Behold us again prepared to conjure ye by the names and symbols of God, wherewith we are fortified and by the virtue of the Highest One. We command yet and potently ordain yet by the most strong and powerful names of God, who is worthy of all praise, admiration, honor, glory, veneration, and fear, that ye delay not longer, but that ye appear before us without any tumult or disturbance, but, on the contrary, with great respect and courtesy, in a beautiful and human form. 
if they then appear, let them see the pentacles, and say, Obey ya, obey ya, behold the symbols and names of the Creator, be ye gentle and peaceable, and obey in all things that we shall command ya. They will then immediately talk with thee, as a friend speaketh unto a friend. Ask of them all that thou desirest, with constance, firmness, and assurance, and they will obey thee. But if they appear not yet, let not the master on that account lose his courage, for there is nothing in the world stronger and of greater force to overawe the spirits than constancy. Let him, however, re-examine and reform the circle, and let him take up a little dust of the earth, which he shall cast towards the four quarters of the universe, and having placed his knife upon the ground, let him say on his knees, turning towards the direction of the north, in the name of Adonai Elohim Zabath Shaddai, Lord God of Armies Almighty, may we successfully perform the works of our hands. And may the Lord be present with us in our heart and in our lips. These words having been said kneeling upon the earth, let the Master shortly after arise and open his arms wide as if wishing to embrace the air, and say, Conjuration! By the holy names of God written in this book, and by the other holy and ineffable names which are written in the Book of Life, we conjure ye to come unto us promptly and without any delay, wherefore tarry not, but appear in a beautiful and agreeable form the figure, by these holy names, Adonai, Zabaoth, El, Elohi, Elohim, Shaddai, and by Ahai, Yadhi Vavhi which is the great name of God Tetragrammaton and written with four letters, Anaphadition, and Ineffable, by the God of those virtues and potencies, who dwelleth in the heavens, who rideth upon the cherubim, who moveth upon the wings of the wind, he whose power is in heaven and in earth, who spake and it was done, who commanded, and the whole universe was created, and by the holy names and in the holy names, Ea, 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 Adonai Zabaoth, and by all the names of God, the living, and the true, I reiterate the conjuration, and I conjure ye afresh ye evil and rebellious spirits, abiding in the abysses of darkness. I conjure, I address, and I exorcise ye, that ye may approach unto and come before the throne of God, the living, and the true, and before the tribunal of the judgment of his majesty, and before the holy angels of God to hear the sentence of your condemnation. Come ye then by the name and in the name of Shaddai which is that of God Almighty, strong, powerful, admirable, exalted, pure, clean, glorified, virtuous, great, just, terrible, and holy, and by the name and in the name of El, Ea, 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 who hath formed and created the world by the breath of his mouth, who suppertaeth it by his power, who ruleth and governeth it by his wisdom, and who hath cast ye for your pride into the land of darkness and into the shadow of death. Therefore, by the name of the living God, who hath formed the heavens above, and hath laid the foundations of the earth beneath, we command ye that, immediately and without any delay, ye come unto us from all places, valleys, mountains, hills, field, seas, rivers, fountains, ponds, brooks, caverns, grottoes, cities, towns, villages, markets, fairs, habitations, baths, courtyards, gardens, vineyards, plantations, reservoirs, cisterns, and from every corner of the terrestrial earth where ye may happen to be in your assemblies, so that ye may execute and accomplish our demands with all mildness and courtesy, by that ineffable name which Moses heard and invoked, which he received from God from the midst of the burning bush, we conjure ye to obey our commands, and to come unto us promptly with all gentleness of manner. Again we command ye with vehemence, and we exorcise ye with constancy, that ye and all your comrades come unto us in an agreeable and gracious manner like the breeze, to accomplish successively our various commands and desires. Come ye, then, by the virtue of these names by the which we exorcise ye, Anai, each had, Transon, Emeth, Chaya, Iona, Prifa, Titashe, Ben-Ani, Briah, Thite, 
all which names are written in heaven in the characters of Malachim, that is to say, the tongue of the angels. We then, by the just judgment of God, by the ineffable and admirable virtue of God, just, living, and true, we call Yah with power, we force and exorcise Yah by and in the admirable name which was written on the tables of stone which God gave upon Mount Sinai, and by and in the wonderful name which Aaron the high priest bare written upon his breast, by which also God created the world, the which name is Axenedon, and by the living God who is one throughout the ages, whose dwelling is in the ineffable light, whose name is wisdom, and whose spirit is life, before whom goeth forth fire and flame, who hath from that fire formed the firmament, the stars, and the sun, and who with that fire will burn yet all for ever, as also all who shall contravene the words of his will. Come ye, then, without delay, without noise, and without rage, before us, without any deformity or hideousness, to execute all our will, come ye from all places wherein ye are, from all mountains, valleys, streams, rivers, brooks, ponds, places, baths, synagogues, for God, strong and powerful, will chase ye and constrain ye, being glorious over all things, he will compel ye, both ye and the prince of darkness. Come ye, come ye, angels of darkness, come hither before this circle without fear, terror, or deformity, to execute our commands, and be ye ready both to achieve and to complete all that we shall command ye. Come ye, then, by the crown of the chief of your emperors, and by the scepters of your power, and of Sid, the great demon, your master, by the names and in the names of the holy angels who have been created to be above you, long before the constitution of the world, and by the names of the two princes of the universe, whose names are, Ionil and Sephaniel, by the rod of Moses, by the staff of Jacob, by the ring and seal of David, wherein are written the names of sovereign God, and by the names of the angels by which Solomon has linked and bound yet, and by the sacred bonds by which Anael hath environed and hath conquered the spirit, and by the name of the angel who ruleth potently over the rest, and by the praise of all creatures who cry incessantly unto God, who spake, and immediately all things, even the ages, were made and formed, and by the name Hakata Spirica, which signifies the Holy and Blessed One, and by the ten choirs of the holy angels Chayath Hakadesh, Ophanim. Aralim, Shashmalim, Seraphim, Malachim, Elohim, Beni Elohim, Kirubim, and Ashim, and by, and in the sacred name of twelve letters of which each letter is the name of an angel, and the letters of the name are Aleph, Beth, Beth, Nun, Vav, Resh, Vav, Cheth, He, Qoph, Daleth, Shin. By these names therefore, and by all the other holy names, we conjure yet and we exorcise yet, by the angel Zekiel, by the angel Duchiel, by the angel Donachiel, and by the great angel Metatron, who is the prince of the angels, and introduceth the souls before the face of God, and by the angel Sangariel, by whom the portals of heaven are guarded, and by the angel Kirub, who was made the guardian of the terrestrial paradise, with the sword of flame, after the expulsion of Adam our forefather? and by the angel Michael by whom ye were hurled down from the height of the throne into the depth of the lake and of the abyss, the same name meaning, who is like God upon earth, and by the angel Oniel, and by the angel Ophiel, and by the angel Bedaliel, wherefore, by these and by all the other holy names of the angels, we powerfully conjure and exorcise ye, that ye come from all parts of the world immediately, and without any delay to perform our will and demands, obeying us quickly and courteously, and that ye come by the name and in the name of Aleph, Daleth, Nun, Iod, for we exorcise ye anew by the application of these letters, by whose power burning fire is quenched, and the whole universe trembleth. We constrain ye yet again by the seal of the sun which is the word of God, and by the seal of the moon and of the stars we bind yet, 
and by the other animals and creatures which are in heaven, by whose wings heaven cleanseth itself, we force and attract ye imperiously to execute our will without failure. And we conjure, oblige, and terribly exorcise ye, that ye draw near unto us without delay and without fear, as far as is possible unto ye, here before this circle, as supplicants gently and with discretion, to accomplish our will in all and through all. If ye come promptly and voluntarily, ye shall inhale our perfumes, and our suffumigations of pleasant odor, which will be both agreeable and delightful unto ye. Furthermore ye will see the symbol of your Creator, and the names of his holy angels, and we shall afterwards dismiss ye, and send ye hence with thanks. But if, on the contrary, ye come not quickly, and ye show yourselves self-opinionated, rebellious, and contumacious, we shall conjure ye again, and exorcise ye ceaselessly, and will repeat all the aforesaid words and holy names of God and of the holy angels, by the which names we shall harass you, and if that be not sufficient we will add thereunto yet greater and more powerful ones, and we will thereunto again add other names which ye have not yet heard from us, which are those of an almighty God, and which will make ye tremble and quake with fear both ye and your princes, by the which names we conjure both you and them also, and we shall not desist from our work until the accomplishment of our will. But if perchance ye yet shall harden yourselves, and show yourselves self-opinionated, disobedient, rebellious, refractory, and contumacious, and if ye yet resist our powerful conjurations, we shall pronounce against you this warrant of arrest in the name of God Almighty and this definite sentence that ye shall fall into dangerous disease and leprosy, and that in sign of the divine vengeance ye shall all perish by a terrifying and horrible death, and that a fire shall consume and devour you on every side, and utterly crush you, and that by the power of God, a flame shall go forth from his mouth which shall burn ye up and reduce ye unto nothing in hell. Wherefore delay ye not to come, for we shall not cease from these powerful conjurations until ye shall be obliged to appear against your will. Thus then, therefore, we anew conjure and exorcise ye by and in the holy name of On, which is interpreted and called God, by the name and in the name of Ahi, which is the true name of God, I am He who is, by and in the ineffable name of four letters Yod He Vav He, the knowledge and understanding of which is hidden even from the angels by the name and in the name of El, which signifieth and denoteth the powerful and consuming fire which issueth from his countenance, and which shall be your ruin and destruction, and by the light of the angels which is kindled and taken ineffably from that flame of divine ardor. By these then, and by other most holy names which we pronounce against you from the bottom of our hearts, do we force and constrain ye, if ye be yet rebellious and disobedient. We conjure ye powerfully and strongly exorcise ye, that ye come unto us with joy and quickness, without fraud or deceit, in truth and not in error. Come ye then, come ye, behold the signs and the names of your Creator, behold the holy pentacles by the virtue of which the earth is moved, the trees thereof and the abysses tremble. Come ye, come ye, come ye. These things being thus done and performed, ye shall see the spirits come from all sides in great haste with their princes and superiors, the spirits of the first order, like soldiers, armed with spears, shields and corslets, those of the second order like barons, princes, dukes, captains, and generals of armies. For the third and last order their king will appear, before whom go many players on instruments of music accompanied by beautiful and melodious voices which sing in chorus. Then the exorcist, or master of the art, at the arrival of the king, whom he shall see crowned with a diadem, should uncover the holy pentacles and medals which he weareth upon his breast covered with a cloth of silk or of fine twined linen, and show them unto him, saying, Behold the signs and holy names by and before whose power every knee should bow of all that is in heaven, upon earth, or in hell. Humble ye yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Then will the king bow the knee before thee, and will say, 
what dost thou wish, and wherefore hast thou caused us to come hither from the infernal abodes? Then shall the exorcist, or master of magical art, with an assured air and a grave and imperious voice, order and command him to be tranquil, to keep the rest of his attendants peaceable, and to impose silence upon them. Let him, also, renew his fumigations, and offer large quantities of incense, which he should at once place upon the fire, in order to appease the spirits as he hath promised them. He should then cover the pentacles, and he will see wonderful things, which it is impossible to relate, touching worldly matters and all sciences. This being finished, let the master uncover the pentacles, and demand all that he shall wish from the king of the spirits, and if there are one or two spirits only, it will be the same, and having obtained all his desire, he shall thus license them to depart. The License to Depart In the name of Adonai, the Eternal and Everlasting One, let each of you return unto his place, be there peace between us and you, and be ye ready to come when ye are called. After this he should recite the first chapter of Genesis, Baras hith bara Elohim, in the beginning, and see. This being done, let them all in order quit the circle, one after the other, the master first. Furthermore let them bathe their faces with the exorcised water, as will be hereafter told, and then let them take their ordinary raiment and go about their business. Take notice and observe carefully that this last conjuration is of so great importance and efficacy, that even if the spirits were bound with chains of iron and fire, or shut up in some strong place, or retained by an oath, they could not even then delay to come. But supposing that they were being conjured in some other place or part of the universe by some other exorcist or master of the art, by the same conjuration, the master should add to his conjuration that they should at least send him some messengers, or some individual to declare unto him where they are, how employed, and the reason why they cannot come and obey him. But if, which is almost impossible, they be even yet self-opinionated and disobedient, and unwilling to obey, in this case their names should be written on virgin paper, which he should soil and fill with mud, dust, or clay. Then he shall kindle a fire with dry rue, upon which he shall put powdered asafoetida, and other things of evil odor, after which let him put the aforesaid names, written on parchment or virgin parchment paper, upon the fire, saying, The Conjuration of the Fire I conjure thee, O creature of fire, by him who removeth the earth, and maketh it tremble, that thou burn and torment these spirits, so that they may feel it intensely, and that they may be burned eternally by thee. This being said, thou shalt cast the aforesaid paper into the fire, saying, The curse. Be ye accursed, damned, and eternally reproved, and be ye tormented with perpetual pain, so that we may find no repose by night nor by day, nor for a single moment of time, if ye obey not immediately the command of him who makes the universe to tremble, by these names, and in virtue of these names, the which being named and invoked all creatures obey and tremble with fear and terror, these names which can turn aside lightning and thunder, and which will utterly make you to perish, destroy, and banish you. These names then are Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, Vav, Zayin, Cheth, Taith, Yod, Kof, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samek, Ion, P, Zadi, Kof, Resh, Shin, Tau. By these secret names, therefore, and by these signs which are full of mysteries, we curse yet, and in virtue of the power of the three principles. Aleph, Mem, Shin, we deprive ye of all office and dignity which ye may have enjoyed up till now, and by their virtue and power we relegate you unto a lake of sulphur and of flame, and unto the deepest depths of the abyss, that ye may burn therein eternally for ever. Then will they assuredly come without any delay, and in great haste, crying, O our Lord and Prince, deliver us out of this suffering. 
All this time thou shouldest have near thee ready an exorcised pen, paper, and ink, as will be described hereinafter. Write their names afresh, and kindle fresh fire, whereon thou shalt put gum benjamin, olibdenum, and storax to make therewith a fumigation, with these odors thou shalt afresh, perfume the aforesaid paper with the names, but thou shouldest have these names ready prepared beforehand. Then show them the holy pentacles, and ask of them what thou wilt, and thou shalt obtain it, and having gained thy purpose, send away the spirits, saying, The license to depart. By the virtue of these pentacles, and because ye have been obedient, and have obeyed the commandments of the Creator, feel and inhale this grateful odor, and afterwards depart ye unto your abodes and retreats, be there peace between us and you, be ye ever ready to come when ye shall be sighted and called, and may the blessing of God, as far as ye are capable of receiving it, be upon you provided ye be obedient and prompt to come unto us without solemn rites and observances on our part. Thou shouldest further make a book of virgin parchment paper, and therein write the foregoing conjurations, and constrain the demons to swear upon the same book that they will come whenever they be called, and present themselves before thee, whenever thou shalt wish to consult them. Afterwards thou canst cover this book with sacred sigils on a plate of silver, and therein write or engrave the holy pentacles. Thou mayest open this book either on Sundays or on Thursdays, rather at night than by day, and the spirits will come. Regarding the expression night, understand the night following, and not the night preceding the aforesaid days. And remember that by day, the demons, are ashamed, for they are animals of darkness. Concerning pentacles, and the manner of constructing them, as we have already made mention of the pentacles, it is necessary that thou shouldest understand that the whole science and understanding of our key dependeth upon the operation, knowledge, and use of pentacles. He then who shall wish to perform any operation by the means of the metals, or pentacles, and therein to render himself expert, must observe what hath been herein before ordained. Let him then, O my son Raboam, Know and understand that in the aforesaid pentacles he shall find those ineffable and most holy names which were written by the finger of God in the tablets of Moses and which I, Solomon, have received through the ministry of an angel by divine revelation. These then have I collected together, arranged, consecrated, and kept, for the benefit of the human race, and the preservation of body and of soul. The pentacles should then be made in the days and hours of Mercury, when the moon is in an aerial or terrestrial sign, she should also be in her increase, and in equal number of days with the Sunday. It is necessary to have a chamber or cabinet specially set apart and newly cleaned, wherein thou canst remain without interruption, the which having entered with thy companions, thou shalt incense and perfume it with the odors and perfumes of the art. The sky should be clear and serene. It is necessary that thou shouldest have one or more pieces of virgin paper prepared and arranged ready, as we shall tell you more fully later on, in its place. Thou shalt commence the writing or construction of the pentacles in the hour aforesaid. Among other things, thou shalt chiefly use these colors, gold, cinnabar, or vermilion red, and celestial or brilliant azure blue. Furthermore, Thou shalt make these metals or pentacles with exorcised pen and colors, as we shall hereafter show thee. Whensoever thou constructest them, if thou canst complete them in the hour wherein thou didst begin them, it is better. However, if it be absolutely necessary to interrupt the work, thou shouldest await the proper day and hour before recommencing it. The pentacles being finished and completed, take a cloth of very fine silk, as we shall hereafter ordain thee, in the which thou shalt wrap the pentacles. After which thou shalt take a large vessel of earth filled with charcoal, upon the which there must be put frankincense, mastic, and aloes, all having been previously conjured and exorcised as shall hereafter be told thee. Thou must also be thyself pure, clean, and washed, as thou shalt find given in the proper place. Furthermore, Thou shouldest have the sickle or knife of magical art, 
with the which thou shalt make a circle, and trace within it an inner circle, and in the space between the two thou shalt write the names of God, which thou shalt think fit and proper. It is necessary after this that thou shouldest have within the circle a vessel of earth with burning coals and odoriferous perfumes thereon, with the which thou shalt fumigate the aforesaid pentacles. And, having turned thy face towards the east, thou shalt hold the said pentacles over the smoke of the incense, and shalt repeat devoutly the following Psalms of David my father, Psalms 8, XXI, XXVII, XXIX, XXXII, Li, Lzi, Pthersiv. After this thou shalt repeat the following oration. The Oration O Adonai Most Powerful, El Most Strong, Agla Most Holy, On Most Righteous, the Aleph and the Tau, the beginning and the end, thou who hast established all things in thy wisdom, thou who hast chosen Abraham thy faithful servant, and hast promised that in his seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, which seed thou hast multiplied as the stars of heaven, thou who hast appeared unto thy servant Moses in flame in the midst of the burning bush, and hast made him walk with dry feet through the Red Sea, thou who gavest the law to him upon Mount Sinai, Thou who hast granted unto Solomon thy servant these pentacles by thy great mercy, for the preservation of soul and of body, we most humbly implore and supplicate thy holy majesty, that these pentacles may be consecrated by thy power, and prepared in such manner that they may obtain virtue and strength against all spirits, through thee, O most holy Adonai, whose kingdom, empire, and principally, remaineth and endureth without end. These words being said, thou shalt perfume the pentacles with the same sweet scents and perfumes, and afterwards having wrapped them in a piece of prepared silk cloth, thou shalt put them in a place fit and clean, which thou mayest open whenever it shall please thee, and close it again, at thy pleasure and according unto thy will. We will hereafter show thee the method and manner of preparing the aforesaid place, of perfuming it with scents and sweet odors and of sprinkling it with the water and water sprinkler of magical art for all these things contain many good properties, and innumerable virtues, as experience will easily teach thee. We have already said sufficient regarding the solemn conjuration of spirits. We have also spoken enough in our present key, regarding the manner in which it is necessary to attract the spirits so as to make them speak. Now, by divine aid, I will teach thee how to perform certain experiments with success. No, O oh my son Raboam, that all the divine sigils, characters, and names, which are the most precious and excellent things in nature, whether terrestrial or celestial, should be written by thee each separately, when thou art in a state of grace and purity, upon virgin parchment, with ordinary ink, in the beginning of the month of August before sunrise raising thine eyes unto heaven, and turning towards the east. Thou shalt preserve them to suspend from thy neck, whichever thou wilt, on the day and hour wherein thou wast born, after which thou shalt take heed to name every day ten times, the name which is hung from thy neck, turning towards the east, and thou mayest be assured that no enchantment or any other danger shall have power to harm thee. Furthermore thou shalt vanquish all adversities, and shalt be cherished and loved by the angels and spirits, provided that thou hast made their characters and that thou hast them upon thee, I assure thee that this is the true way to succeed with case in all thine operations, for being fortified with a divine name, and the letters, characters, and sigils, applicable unto the operation, thou shalt discover with what supernatural exactitude and very great promptitude, both terrestrial and celestial things will be obedient unto thee. But all this will only be true, when accompanied by the pentacles which hereinafter follow, seeing that the seals, characters, and divine names, serve only to fortify the work, to preserve from unforeseen accidents, and to attract the familiarity of the angels and spirits, which is one reason, my son, that before making any experiment, I order thee to read and reread my testament, not once only but many times, so that being perfectly instructed in the several ceremonies thou mayest in no way fail, 
and that thus what shall have previously appeared to thee difficult and lengthy, may become in process of time easy and of very great use. I am about to endow thee with many secrets, which I charge thee never to employ for an evil purpose, for accursed be he who taketh the name of Almighty God in vain, but thou mayest without any other ceremonies make use of them, provided that, as I have already said, thou hast only the glory of eternal God for thine object. Thus, after having taught thee all the ceremonies which concern the manner of performing the operations, I am at length determined to make thee a par taker in the secrets of which I have particular knowledge, unknown to this day unto the generality of men, but, nevertheless, only on the condition that thou attemptest not the ruin and destruction of thy neighbour, for his blood will cry for vengeance unto God, and in the end thou and thine shall feel the just wrath of an offended deity. However, God not having forbidden honest and lawful pleasures, thou mayest perform boldly the operations which follow, it being always especially necessary to distinguish between the good and the evil, so as to choose the former and avoid the latter, which is why I command thee to be attentive to all that is contained in this my testament. Of the experiment concerning things stolen, and how it should be performed. My beloved son, if thou findest any theft, thou shalt do as is hereinafter ordained, and with the help of God thou shalt find that which hath been taken away. If the hours and days be not otherwise ordained in this operation, thou must refer to what hath already been said. But before commencing any operation whatsoever for the recovery of things stolen, after having made all necessary preparations, thou shalt say the following oration, the oration. Ate Adonai Elohim Asher HaShamain Vee HaEretz, and see thou, O Lord, who hast made both heaven and earth, and hast measured them in the hollow of thy hand, thou who art seated upon the cherubim and the seraphim, in the high places, whereunto human understanding cannot penetrate, thou who hast created all things by thine agency, in whose presence are the living creatures, of which four are marvelously volatile, which have six wings, and who incessantly cry aloud, Cadus, Cadus, Cadus. Adonai Elohim Zabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory, O Lord God, thou who hast expelled Adam from the terrestrial paradise, and who hast placed the cherubim to guard the tree of life, thou art the Lord who alone doest wonders, show forth I pray thee thy great mercy, by the holy city of Jerusalem, by thy wonderful name of four letters which are Yod, he, Vav, he, and by thy holy and admirable name, give unto me the power and virtue to enable me to accomplish this experiment, and to come unto the desired end of this operation, through thee who art life, and unto whom life belongeth unto the eternal ages. Amen. After this perfume and sense the place by burning incense. This aforesaid place should be pure, clean, safe from interruption or disturbance, and proper to the work, as we shall hereafter show. Then sprinkle the aforesaid place with consecrated water, as is laid down in the chapter concerning circles. The operation being in such wise prepared, thou shalt rehearse the conjuration necessary for this experiment, at the end of which thou shalt say as follows, O Almighty Father and Lord, who regardest the heavens, the earth, and the abyss, Mercifully grant unto me by thy holy name written with four letters, Yod, He, Vav, He, that by this exorcism I may obtain virtue, thou who art Ea, 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 grant that by thy power these spirits may discover that which we require and which we hope to find, and may they show and declare unto us the persons who have committed the theft, and where they are to be found. I conjure yet over this burning incense, anew, yes spirits above named, by all the aforesaid names, through which all things created tremble, that ye show openly unto me, or unto this child here present with us, those things which we seek. These things being accomplished they will make thee to see plainly that which thou seekest. Take note that the exorcist, or master of the art, should be such as is ordained in the chapter concerning the exorcist and his companions, 
and if in this experiment it should be necessary to write down characters or name, thou shalt do that which it is necessary to observe regarding the pen, ink, and paper, as is duly prescribed in the chapters concerning them. For if thou dost not regard these things, thou wilt neither accomplish that which thou desirest, nor arrive at thy desired end. How to know who has committed a theft? Take a sieve, after burning one half teaspoonful of incense, and suspend it by a piece of cord wherewith a man has been hung, which should be fastened round the circumference of the rim. Within the rim write with blood in the four divisions thereof the characters given in figure four. After this take a basin of brass perfectly clean which thou shalt fill with water from a fountain, and having pronounced these words, dies mys yes chet bani dun fet donima metamos, make the sieve spin round with thy left hand, and at the same time turn with thy right hand the water in the basin in a contrary direction, by stirring it with a twig of green laurel. When the water becometh still and the sieve no longer whirls, gaze fixedly into the water, and thou shalt see the form of him who hath committed the theft, and in order that thou mayest the more easily recognize him, thou shalt mark him in some part of his face with the magical sword of art, for that sign which thou shalt have cut therewith in the water, shall be really found thereafter upon his own person. The manner of causing the sieve to turn, that thou mayest know who has committed the theft. Take a sieve and stick into the outside of the rim the open points of a pair of size sores, and having rested the rings of the said open scissors on the thumbnails of two persons, let one of them say the following prayer. Prayer. Dies mys yes chet bani dun fet donima metamos, O Lord, who liberatedst the holy Susanna from a false accusation of crime, O Lord, who liberatedst the holy Thecla, O Lord, who rescuedst the holy Daniel from the den of lions, and the three children from the burning fiery furnace, free the innocent and reveal the guilty. After this let him or her pronounce aloud the names and surnames of all the persons living in the house where the theft has been committed, who may be suspected of having stolen the things in question, saying, By Saint Peter and Saint Paul, such a person hath not done this thing. And let the other reply, By Saint Peter and Saint Paul, he, or she, hath not done it. Let this be repeated thrice for each person named and suspected and it is certain that on naming the person who hath committed the theft or done the crime, the sieve will turn of itself without its being able to stop it, and by this thou shalt know the evildoer of the experiment of invisibility, and how it should be performed. If thou wishest to perform the experiment of invisibility, thou shalt follow the instructions for the same. If it be necessary to observe the day and the hour, thou shalt do as is said in their chapters. But if thou needest not observe the day and the hour as marked in the chapter thereon, thou shalt do as taught in the chapter which presteth it. If in the course of the experiment it be necessary to write anything, it should be done as is described in the chapters pertaining thereto, with the proper pen, paper, and ink, or blood. But if the matter is to be accomplished by invocation, before thy conjurations, thou shalt, while burning incense, Say devoutly in thine heart, Seabols, Arborin, Elohi, Elimajith, Hiranobulkil, Meth, Baluth, Timayal, Vilaquil, Tavani, Yevi, Ferret, Bakahaba, Guvarin, through him by whom ye have empire and power over men, ye must accomplish this work so that I may go and remain invisible. And if it be necessary in this operation to trace a circle, Thou shalt do as is ordained in the chapter concerning circles, and if it be necessary to write characters, and see, thou shalt follow the instructions given in the respective chapters. This operation being thus prepared, if there be an especial conjuration to perform, thou shalt repeat it in the proper manner, if not, thou shalt say the general conjuration, at the end of which thou shalt add the following words, O thou Almaraz, Master of Invisibility, with thy ministers Kiros, Mater, Teng Edem, Transidim, Suventos, Abaleos, Bord, Belamith, Katumi, Dabul, 
I conjure ye by him who maketh earth and heaven to tremble, who is seated upon the throne of his majesty, that this operation may be perfectly accomplished according to my will, so that at whatsoever time it may please me, I may be able to be invisible. I conjure thee anew, O Almaraz, chief of invisibility, both thee and thy ministers, by him through whom all things have their being, and by Satriel, Harkiel, Daniel, Benil, Asimonim, that thou immediately comest thither with all thy ministers, and achievest this operation, as thou knowest it ought to be accomplished, and that by the same operation thou render me invisible, so that none may be able to see me. In order then to accomplish this aforesaid operation, thou must prepare all things necessary with requisite care and diligence, and put them in practice with all the general and particular ceremonies laid down for these experiments, and with all the conditions contained in our first and second books. Thou shalt also in the same operations duly repeat the appropriate conjurations, with all the solemnities marked in the respective chapters. Thus shalt thou accomplish the experiment surely and without hindrance, and thus shalt thou find it true. But, on the contrary, if thou lettest any of these things escape thee, or if thou despiseth them, never shalt thou be able to arrive at thy proposed end, as, for example, we enter not easily into a fenced city over its walls but through its gates. How to render oneself invisible? Make a small image of yellow wax, in the form of a man, in the month January and in the day and hour of Saturn, and at that time write with a needle above the crown of its head and upon its skull which thou shalt have adroitly raised, the character following. See Figure 5. After which thou shalt replace the skull in proper position. Thou shalt then write upon a small strip of the skin of a frog or toad which thou shalt have killed, the following words and characters. See Figure 6. Thou shalt then go and suspend the said figure by one of thy hairs from the vault of a cavern at the hour of midnight, and burning incense under it, thou shalt say. Metatron, Malak, Baroth, Noth, Venabeth, Mach, and all yet, I conjure thee O figure of wax, by the living God, that by the virtue of these characters and words, thou render me invisible, wherever I may bear thee with me. Amen. And after having burned incense again under it, thou shalt bury it in the same place in a small deal box, and every time that thou wishest to pass or enter into any place without being seen, thou shalt say these words, bearing the aforesaid figure in thy left pocket, Come unto me and never quit me whithersoever I shall go. Afterwards thou shalt take it carefully back unto the before-mentioned place and cover it with earth until thou shalt need it again. To hinder a sportsman from killing any game. Take a stick of green elder, from the two ends of which thou shalt clean out the pith. In each end place a strip of parchment of hair skin, having written thereon with the blood of a black hen the following character and word. See figure 7. Having made two of these slips, place one in each end of the stick and close the apertures up with pith. Afterwards on a Friday in the month of February thou shalt fumigate the aforesaid stick with suitable incense thrice in the air, and having taken it thence thou shalt bury it in the earth under an elder tree. Afterwards thou shalt expose it in the pathway by which the sportsman will pass, and once he has passed by it, he need not hope to kill any game during that day. If thou shalt wish a second time to lay a spell upon him in like manner, Thou needest but to expose the stick again in his path, but take care to bury it again in the earth under an elder tree, so as to be able to take it from thence each time that thou shalt have need of it, and to take it up each time as soon as the sportsman shall have passed. How to make the magic garters? Take enough of the skin of a stag to make two hollow tubular garters, but before stitching them up thou shalt write on the side of the skin which was next the flesh the words and characters shown in figure 8, with the blood of a hare killed on the 25th of June, and having filled the said garters with green mug word gathered also on the 25th of June before sunrise, thou shalt put in the two ends of each the eye of the fish called barbel, and when thou shalt wish to use them thou shalt get up. 
before sunrise and wash them in a brook of running water, and place them one on each leg above the knee. After this thou shalt take a short rod of whole milk cut on the same 25th of June, turn in the direction thou wishest to go, write upon the ground the name of the place, and commencing thy journey thou wilt find it accomplished in a few days and without fatigue. When thou wishest to stop thou hast only to say a mech and beat the air with the aforesaid wand, and incontinently thou shalt be on firm ground. How to make the magic carpet proper for interrogating the intelligence, so as to obtain an answer regarding whatsoever matter one may wish to learn. Make, a carpet of white and new wool, and when the moon shall be at her full, in the sign of Capricorn and in the hour of the sun, thou shalt go into the country away from any habitation of man, in a place free from all impurity, and shalt spread out thy carpet so that one of its points shall be towards the east, and another towards the west, and having made a circle without it and enclosing it, thou shalt remain within upon the point towards the east, and holding thy wand in the air for every operation, thou shalt call upon Michael, towards the north upon Raphael, towards the west upon Gabriel, and towards the south upon Muriel. After this thou shalt return unto the point of the east and devoutly invoke the great name Agla, and take this point of the carpet in thy left hand, turning then towards the north thou shalt do the same, and so continuing to the other points of the carpet, thou shalt raise them so that they touch not the ground, and holding them up thus, and turning anew towards the east thou shalt say with great veneration the following prayer. Prayer Agla Agla, 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 O God Almighty who art the life of the universe and who rulest over the four divisions of its vast form by the strength and virtue of the four letters of thy holy name Tetragrammaton, Yod, He, Vav, He, bless in thy name this covering which I hold as thou hast blessed the mantle of Elijah in the hands of Elisha, so that being covered by thy wings, nothing may be able to injure me, even as it is said. He shall hide thee under his wings and beneath his feathers shall thou trust, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. After this thou shalt fold it up, saying these words following, Rekabustira, Kabustira, Bustira, Tira Ra, A, and shall keep it carefully to serve thee at need. When thou shalt be desirous to make thine interrogations, choose the night of full or of new moon and from midnight until daybreak. Thou shalt transport thyself unto the appointed spot if it be for the purpose of discovering a treasure, if not, any place will serve provided it be clean and pure. Having had the precaution on the preceding evening to write upon a slip of virgin parchment colored azure blue, with a pen made from the feather of a dove, this character and name, see figure 9, taking thy carpet, thou shalt cover thy head and body therewith and taking the censer, with new fire therein, thou shalt place it in or upon the proper place, and cast thereon some incense. Then shalt thou prostrate thyself upon the ground, with thy face towards the earth, before the incense beginneth to fume, keeping the fire of the same beneath the carpet, holding thy wand upright, against which to rest thy chin, thou shalt hold with. Thy right hand the aforesaid strip of parchment against thy forehead. And thou shalt say the following words, Vigal, Hamikata, Umsa, Terada, Yat, Da, Ma, Baksasaza, Un, Hora, Himsir, O God the Vast One send unto me the inspiration of thy light, make me to discover the secret thing which I ask of thee, whatsoever such or such a thing may be. Make me to search it out by the aid of thy holy ministers Raziel, Zaphniel, Motmuniel, Lo, thou hast desired truth in the young, and in the hidden thing shalt thou make me known wisdom. Rekabustira, Kabustira, Bustira, Tira, R.A., A., Karkada, Kahita, H.I.T.A., Ta. And thou shalt hear distinctly the answer which thou shalt have sought. How to render thyself master of a treasure possessed by the spirits. The earth being inhabited, as I have before said unto thee, by a great number of celestial beings and spirits, 
who by their subtlety and provision know the places wherein treasures are hidden, and seeing that it often happeneth that those men who undertake a search for these said treasures are molested and sometimes put to death by the aforesaid spirits, which are called gnomes, which, however, is not done through the avarice of these said gnomes, a spirit being incapable of possessing any thing, having no material senses wherewith to bring it into use, but because these spirits, who are enemies of the passions, are equally so of avarice, unto which men are so much inclined, and foreseeing the evil ends for which these treasures will be employed have some interest and aim in maintaining the earth in its condition of price and value, seeing that they are its inhabitants, and when they slightly disturb the workers in such kind of treasures, it is a warning which they give them to cease from the work, and if it happen that the greedy importunity of the aforesaid workers oblige them to continue, notwithstanding the aforesaid warnings, the spirits, irritated by their despising the same, frequently put the workmen to death. But no, O oh my son, that from the time that thou shalt have the good fortune to be familiar with such kinds of spirits, and that thou shalt be able by means of what I have taught thee to make them submit unto thine orders, they will be happy to give thee, and to make thee partaker in that which they uselessly possess, provided that thine object and end shall be to make a good use thereof. The manner of performing the operation. On a Sunday before sunrise, between the 10th of July and the 20th of August, when the moon is in the sign of the lion, thou shalt go unto the place where thou shalt know either by interrogation of the intelligences, or otherwise, that there is a treasure, there thou shalt describe a circle of sufficient size with the sort of magical art wherein to open up the earth, as the nature of the ground will allow. Thrice during the day shalt thou sense it with the incense proper for the day, after. Which being clothed in the raiment proper for the operation thou shalt suspend in some way by a machine immediately above the opening a lamp, whose oil should be mingled with the fat of a man who has died in the month of July, and the wick being made from the cloth wherein he has been buried. Having kindled this with fresh fire, thou shalt fortify the workman with a girdle of the skin of a goat newly slain, whereon shall be written with the blood of the dead man from whom thou shalt have taken the fat these words and characters, see figure 10, and thou shalt set them to work in safety, warning them not to be at all disturbed at the spectres which they will see, but to work away boldly. In case they cannot finish the work in a single day, every time they shall have to leave it thou shalt cause them to put a covering of wood over the opening, and above the covering about six inches of earth and thus shalt thou continue unto the end, being all the time present in the raiment of the art, and with the magic sword, during the operation. After which thou shalt repeat this prayer. Prayer Adonai, Elohim, El, Ahei Asher Ahei, Prince of Princes, Existence of Existences, have mercy upon me, and cast thine eyes upon thy servant, N, who invokes thee most devoutly, and supplicates thee by thy holy and tremendous name Tetragrammaton to be propitious, and to order thine angels and spirits to come and take up their abode in this place, O ye angels and spirits of the stars, O all ye angels and elementary spirits, O all ye spirits present before the face of God, I the minister and faithful servant of the Most High conjure yet, let God himself, the existence of existences, conjure yet to come and be present at this operation, I, the servant of God, most humbly entreat yet. Amen. Having then caused the workmen to fill in the hole, thou shalt license the spirits to depart, thanking them for the favor they have shown unto thee, and saying. The license to depart. O ye good and happy spirits, we thank ye for the benefits which we have just received from your liberal bounty. Depart ye in peace to govern the element which God hath destined for your habitation. Amen. Of the experiment of seeking favor and love. If thou wishest to perform the experiment of seeking favor and love, observe in what manner the experiment is to be carried out, and if it he dependent upon the day and the hour, perform it in the day and the hour required, as thou wilt find it in the chapter concerning the hours and if the experiment be one that requireth writing, 
thou shalt write as it is said in the chapter concerning the same, and if it be with penal bonds, packs, and fumigations, then thou shalt sense with a fit perfume. As is said in the chapter concerning suffumigations, and if it be necessary to sprinkle it with water and hyssop, then let it be as in the chapter concerning the same, similarly if such experiment require characters, names, or the like, let such names be written as the chapter concerning the writing of characters, and place the same in a clean place as hath been said. Then thou shalt repeat over it, after burning incense, the following oration, the oration. O Adonai, most holy, most righteous, and most mighty God, who hast made all things through thy mercy and righteousness wherewith thou art filled, grant unto us that we may be found worthy that this experiment may be found consecrated and perfect, so that the light may issue from thy most holy seat, O Adonai, which may obtain for us favor and love. Amen. This being said, thou shalt place it in clean silk, and bury it for a day and a night at the junction of four crossroads, and whensoever thou wishest to obtain any grace or favor from any, take it, having first properly consecrated it according to the rule and place it in thy right hand, and seek thou what thou wilt it shall not be denied thee. But if thou doest not the experiment carefully and rightly, assuredly thou shalt not succeed in any manner. For obtaining grace and love write down the following words, Siddur, Arpo, Tenet, Opera, Rhodas, Ea, 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 Enam, Ea, Ea, Kether, Chakma, Bina, Gadula, Gabera, Tifereth, Netsach, Hod, Yezid, Makuth, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, be yet all present in my aid and for whatsoever I shall desire to obtain. Which words being properly written as above, thou shalt also find thy desire brought to pass. How operations of mockery, invisibility, and deceit should be prepared. Experiments relating to tricks, mockeries, and deceits, may be performed in many ways. When thou shalt wish to practice these experiments with regard to any person, Thou shalt observe the day and the hour as we have already said. Should it be necessary to write characters or words, it should be done on virgin parchment paper, as we shall show farther on. As for the ink, if it be not specially ordained in this operation, it is advisable to use the blood of a bat with the pen and the needle of art. But before describing or writing the characters or names, all the necessary rules should be observed as given in the proper chapters, and having carefully followed out all these, thou shalt pronounce with a loud voice the following words, Abak, Aldal, Iat, Huduk, Guthak, Guthor, Gomet, Testator, Deriser, Destator, come hither all ye who love the times and places wherein all kinds of mockeries and deceits are practiced. And ye who make things disappear and who render them invisible, come hither to deceive all those who regard these things, so that they may be deceived and that they may seem to see that which they see not and hear that which they hear not, so that their senses may be deceived, and that they may behold that which is not true. Come ye then hither and remain, and consecrate this enchantment, seeing that God the Almighty Lord hath destined ye for such. When this experiment is completed in this manner in the hour and time which we have shown and taught, also the foregoing words Abak, Aldal, and C, should be written with the pen as hereinafter ordained, but if the experiment be performed in a different way, yet shalt thou always say the aforesaid words, and they should be repeated as before given. If thou practicest these things in this manner correctly, thou shalt arrive at the effect of thine operations and experiments by the which thou mayest easily deceive the senses. How extraordinary experiments and operations should be prepared! We have spoken in the preceding chapters of common experiments and operations, which it is more usual to practice and put in operation, and therein thou mayest easily see that we have told thee sufficient for their perfection. In this chapter we treat of extraordinary and unusual experiments, which can also be done in many ways. 
Nonetheless should those who wish to put in practice the like experiments and operations observe the days and hours as is laid down in the proper chapters, and should be provided with genuine parchment paper, made from the skin of dead-born lambs, and other necessary things. Having prepared a similar experiment thou shalt say, Prayer. O God, who hast created all things, and hast given unto us discernment to understand the good and the evil, through thy holy name, and through these holy names, dash iod, ea, vav, daleth, vav, zabaeth, zio, amateur, creator, do thou, O Lord, grant that this experiment may become true and veritable in my hands through thy holy seal, O Adonai, whose reign and empire remaineth eternally and unto the ages of the ages. Amen. This being done, Thou shalt perform the experiment, observing its hour, and thou shalt perfume and incense as is laid down in the proper chapter, sprinkling with exorcised water, and performing all the ceremonies and solemnities as we shall instruct thee in the second book of our key. Concerning the holy pentacles or metals The metals or pentacles, which we make for the purpose of striking terror into the spirits and reducing them to obedience have besides this wonderful and excellent Veer Tuesday. If thou invokest the spirits by virtue of these pentacles, they will obey thee without repugnance, and having considered them they will be struck with astonishment, and will fear them, and thou shalt see them so surprised by fear and terror, that none of them will be sufficiently bold to wish to oppose thy will. They are also, of great virtue and efficacy against all perils of earth, of air, of water, and of fire, against poison which hath been drunk, against all kinds of infirmities and necessities, against binding, sortilage, and sorcery, against all terror and fear, and wheresoever thou shalt find thyself, if armed with them, thou shalt be in safety all the days of thy life. Through them do we acquire grace and good will from man and woman, fire is extinguished, water is stayed, and all creatures fear at the sight of the names which are therein, and obey through that fear. These pentacles are usually made of the metal the most suitable to the nature of the planet, and then there is no occasion to observe the rule of particular colors. They should be engraved with the instrument of art in the days and hours proper to the planet. Saturn ruleth over lead, Jupiter over tin, Mars over iron, the Sun over gold, Venus over copper, Mercury over the mixture of metals, and the Moon over silver. They may also he made with virgin parchment paper, writing thereon with the colors adopted for each planet, referring to the rules already laid down in the proper chapters, and according to the planet with which the pentacle is in sympathy. Therefore unto Saturn the color of black is appropriated, Jupiter ruleth over celestial blue, Mars over red, the sun over gold, or the color of yellow or citron, Venus over green, Mercury over mixed colors, the moon over silver, or the color of Argentine earth. The matter of which the pentacle is constructed should be virgin, never having been used for any other purpose, or if it be metal it should be purified by fire. As regards the size of the pentacles it is arbitrary, so long as they are made according to the rules, and with the requisite solemnities, as hath been ordained. The virtues of the holy pentacles are no less advantageous unto thee than the knowledge of the secrets which I have already given unto thee, and thou shouldst take particular care if thou makest them upon virgin parchment to use the proper colors, and if thou engravest them upon metal, to do so in the manner taught thee, and so shalt thou have the satisfaction of seeing them produce the promised effect. But seeing that this science is not a science of argument and open reasoning, but that, on the contrary, it is entirely mysterious and occult, we should not argue and deliberate over these matters, and it is sufficient to believe firmly to enable us to bring into operation that which hath already been taught. When thou shalt construct these pentacles and characters, it is necessary never to forget the burning of incense nor to employ anything beyond that which hath already been taught. It is necessary, above all things, to be attentive to the operation, and never to forget or omit those things which contribute to the success which the pentacles and experiments promise, 
having ever in thy mind no other intention than the glory of God, the accomplishment of thy desires, and loving kindness towards thy neighbor. Furthermore, my beloved son, I order thee not to bury this science, but to make thy friends partakers in the same, subject, however, to the strict command never to profane the things which are divine, for if thou doest this, far from rendering thee a friend of the spirits, it will but be the means of bringing thee unto destruction. But never must thou lavish these things among the ignorant, for that would be as blamable as to cast precious gems before swine, on the contrary, from one sage the secret knowledge should pass unto another sage, for in this manner shall the treasure of treasures never descend into oblivion. Adore and revere the most holy names of God which are found in these Pentacles and characters, for without this never shalt thou be able to come to the end of any enterprise.